once you have adjusted the channel specific parameters down here, there are other things in this acquisition mode that you can do to improve the quality of your images as refers to contrast, which are the things on this part of this panel, and resolution, which are the things on this part of this panel. So let's talk about contrast first. We've already discussed ways to make images better, specifically to increase the laser power, which will increase brightness, bleaching, but also image quality. Uh, and if you need more room to do that, to lower the digital gain. Now, as I mentioned before, there are limits to how much you can increase the laser power. At a certain point, things will start bleaching. You may run out of room and start risking saturation. You may have fluorophore saturation, which shows up when if you double the laser power, there is not a concomitant doubling of the intensity. So there are reasons why uh, increasing the laser power is not the only thing uh, uh, that you can do because sometimes you run out of room to do it. So what other things can we do to improve the image quality? So the other things we can do are uh, increasing the averaging or lowering the scan speed. So let me illustrate those uh, by, using, uh, by doing this one channel at a time. Be aware that to look at these, that the effect of, you, of modifying these things, we have to use the continuous mode because live doesn't do all the things that it says here. Uh, so if we use continuous mode right now, it will actually do all three channels, which doesn't make sense when we're optimizing. Therefore, I'm gonna turn off all the channels except the 488 and go to continuous. So if I turn on range indicator and best fit, this starting point is already a very nice image. Uh, what you will see is that averaging, just like increasing the laser power, the more you average, the better the image looks, but there are diminishing returns. And the reality is that starting from an image that is this good, if we increase the averaging, you're not going to see much of a difference. We see a slight effect here. If we go to 4x, there's an even smaller effect. And if you go to 8x and 16x, the effect is not noticeable. So what is averaging doing? What it's doing is as the laser scans multiple times, uh, excuse me, scans over the image, instead of scanning each line once, it scans it however many times it says here. So it will take longer, it will not be brighter, uh, it will not increase the intensity because it's just doing the same thing uh, multiple times, and it will bleach more. Uh, an additional advantage to this in, uh, um, compared to uh, increasing the laser is that while increasing the laser twofold or averaging twofold will have a similar effect on quality. Even though they deliver the same amount of light, the way the light is delivered in averaging by sweeping across and coming back is gentler on the sample. So it will bleach less than increasing the laser by a factor of two. So if bleaching is a concern, uh, doing averaging is a more gentle way of improving the quality. Now we don't see a huge improvement in quality, but I'll show you that if we had started from a 0.14, so 10 times less, uh, this is a pretty uh, noisy image, right? So if we go to continuous and I turn this off, or if I even reduce this further, 0, 0, 0.05. So you can see this image is quite bad, but if we start averaging now, the improvements will be very much noticeable and they will be similar to increasing the laser power by that amount. Now keep in mind that when you average, you are doing it for all channels. There is no way in the Zeiss software to only average one channel. As a result, um, you will pay the temporal cost of averaging on all the channels. But what you can do is to um, reduce the laser power in any channels that didn't need averaging by the factor of however much you average. So for example, if the DAPI channel did not need to be averaged eightfold to get a good image, then you can reduce the laser power eightfold because you will get that back with the average thing. So at least you can control your bleaching by using uh, that trick. Now, obviously you pay a time penalty. So this is maybe if you don't have bleaching, not the first choice for where to improve quality. Uh, but if you do have bleaching or if you run out of room with the laser, averaging is an excellent uh, choice to in improve the image quality. The other thing that you can do, I'm going to turn off the averaging, uh, is to lower the scan speed. So right now the scan speed is the maximum. This is what we recommend. If you lower the scan speed, you'll see the pixel dwell time goes up uh, here and that tells you by how much you've lowered it. So if you do this, 
For the same investment in time, you will have a similar effect on quality as averaging. However, I do not recommend you do this because uh, even though the effect on quality is the same for the same investment of time, we've seen empirically that lowering the scan speed tends to lead to more um, photo damage than increasing the average the averaging. So uh, we recommend you always set it at a maximum except for a, a specific case that I'll discuss now. Uh, so that case is going to be um, when you have uh, an, an image uh, that you're trying to acquire, uh, one of the things that you want to do is image as quickly as possible. Right now, the laser is scanning in unidirectional mode, which is like a typewriter pattern uh, through uh, the image. We can make it scan in a snake pattern, and that will double the speed. However, sometimes when we do this, there are slight imperfections that appear in the image. So it's very hard to see these things, and it's sample dependent, zoom dependent, it depends a lot on your imaging conditions. But sometimes there are sort of these jagged lines that appear in the image. So if you have that scenario, uh, if you lower the speed a little bit, so you can see uh, we went from one microsecond pixel dwell time on each pixel to 1.5, uh, that's, that's not as much of a time investment as going from unidirectional to bidirectional. But lowering the speed by that much can sometimes improve the quality, and so you're still faster than unidirectional at maximum speed. Outside of those uh, scenarios, I really uh, don't recommend you change the scan speed. I would leave it at the maximum. The only exceptions are if you've maxed out the laser, maxed out the averaging, and still want more quality, um, you can lower the scan speed. If you're in that situation, if you have a typical biological sample, that usually means there's something wrong with your sample. Uh, for chemical samples, sometimes that is useful, but for biological samples that are typical, if you've maxed out laser power in terms of what you can do here in, in the dynamic range, and you've maxed out the averaging, uh, if you have to lower the scan speed, that, that, that indicates a problem more than anything else.